Hi guys, today we are going to solve a greedy algorithm problem and it's called Mark's Cakewalk. You can see the title here, uh, what I'm highlighting. So it's going to be very easy and I have it, I have my solution to that problem as a gist. It's uh, only a few lines of code. I'm going to share it in the description of this video and also as a comment um, on YouTube. So anyway, let's get into the instructions. Um, we, we have to read it right here, what is on my left. So it says Mark loves cupcakes, but he also likes to stay fit. So anytime he eats cupcakes, uh, we need to take into account the calories of each cupcake and then uh, compute the minimum amount of miles that he needs to walk in order to maintain his weight. So this is the formula that they give us, two to the power of J times C. And here J is the number of cupcakes that he has eaten. And then C is the uh, calorie count for every cupcake. So what we can do here, let's say he has eaten three cupcakes. Uh, we have the calorie count in an array here. We have five, 10, and then seven. We can compute it like this, two to the power of zero times five. Remember here, J is zero base. So if he has eaten three cupcakes, we start J at zero. So two to the power of zero times five plus two to the power of one times 10 plus two to the power of two times seven, we will get 53. That works, but it's not the optimal solution because it's not the minimum one. If we can actually switch the numbers, the calories, uh, the calorie counts in that array, we can get a smaller number of miles, like what you can see here, that second line that I'm trying to highlight. So two to the power of zero times 10, and then we use seven next, and then we use five in third place, and we'll get 44. And this works because they say here, he can eat the cupcakes in any order. So um, if I scroll down here, you can see they give us an example. Let's say he has eaten three cupcakes. The calorie counts are one, three, and two. We can switch the order of cupcakes in order to get 11. So three, the calorie, the cake with a calorie of uh, three is going to be in first place, and then uh, two, and then one, and we'll get 11, which is the optimal solution here. So uh, they give us more examples, but never mind. You guys can go ahead and read that on your own. I'm going to start coding now. So um, in fact, I could actually just grab this here so that I don't have to waste too much time because I'm going to explain it line by line anyway. All right, so what we need to switch here is this function in the return type is long. It takes a vector of integers, which is the calorie counts, that array that you see here at the top, like five, 10, and seven. In this case, we are going to test with the numbers one, three, and two, and then also here, seven, four, nine, six. So they have provided us some code uh, down below. We don't need to worry about that. We only need to worry about the marks cakewalk function here. So at first you can see what I'm doing here is sorting the vector. So this is going to give us the calorie counts in ascending order. And then once I'm done with that, I can grab the number of cakes because I cannot access um, the number n. If you check the main, their the code inside of the main function, I believe n is what you can use to get the number of cakes that he has eaten. In that case, we can't access that, but we, we know the number of cakes he has eaten by counting the number of uh, calorie counts in the calorie counts uh, vector. So uh, we can say um, counts the number of cakes and we call the dot size method on the calorie vector. And then I can get X is going to be the exponent. Miles is going to be what we return, right? So actually I'm going to skip that. And then now long is the data type for miles because we are going to return the number of miles that he has to walk. And that function requires a variable of long data type to be returned. So we can loop through the cakes uh, vector in uh, in reverse order. The reason why I use reverse order is because the largest number, the largest calorie count is going to be at the end because now it's sorted in ascending order. We want to use the biggest numbers at the beginning when we use that formula, two to the power of J times C. That is what is going to give us the minimum number of miles. So we use the numbers from our calorie count vector in reverse order. That's why you see cakes minus one and uh, we go all the way until we equal the uh, the number at index zero. And at every iteration, we can add or increase the, uh, the value of our miles variable with this, the calorie at position i times two to the power of x. And every time that we 
we loop through that, we increase the, uh, the value of x. That is so that, for instance, in this case, calorie at position i, which is the end, is going to be equal to 3. So let's say that was sorted, 3 will be at the end. So we will have 3 times 2 to the power of x. x is 0 at the beginning, right? So at the next iteration, x will be 1. And then we will read the second number, which will be 2 to the power of 1. x will be 1, so we will get the 7 as well. And then finally, we will get uh, the last, uh, the smallest calorie count, which will be 1 in this case, and we add it 2 to the power of 2 because x will be 2 at that point, because we increase it like this. When we are done, notice here we use plus equal, not just equal, because we are updating the number of miles at every iteration. So when we are done with that, we simply return the number of miles. So that's, that's it for the codes. I'm now going to run it. We have paths, you can see here, 1, 3, and 2, and um, also test case 1. So, by the way, if you want to see uh, what you get at every iteration, you can add some uh, optional debug outputs. So, for instance, if you use C out and you want to see out the um, number of miles at every iteration, it will add a new field in your, in your test results. You will see that. So, in this case, we now have debug outputs, what I'm highlighting here, and it says 3, 7, 11. You can see this is what we get here, 3, 7, 11 on my right here. You can comment this out if you want. It's up to you if you want to view the debug output or not. But now I'm going to submit this code and make sure that we pass all the test cases. And we just did. So that's pretty much it for this uh, hacker rank challenge. It's under the greedy algorithm section called Mark's Cakewalk. And that was the solution. You guys can grab the gist. And if you like this video, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, turn on your notifications, drop a like, a comment, and I will catch you next time. Bye.